Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It is Thursday, March 18th, 2021. And for one last time, this is your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chicken Analytics. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where you can see daily stock ideas for you to consider upon further research and it would hit your inbox every trading day before the market opens. I uh, just want to, before we get started, say thank you to you all uh, every day for taking the time out to hear my thoughts, my ideas, my views, sometimes my rants. Um, it's been fun for me. Hopefully it has been informative and educational for you. Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to what I have to say. So U.S. equities finished higher Wednesday, moving up on the heels of dovish messaging from Fed Chairman Powell. Discretionary industrials and energy outperformed while utilities, healthcare, and REITs lagged. Treasuries were mixed with the curve steepening. The dollar extended, uh, I'm sorry, the dollar weakened on the major crosses. Uh, gold closed down 20 basis points. Crude oil finished down 30 basis points on the day. As we get to the desk this morning, it's a little bit choppy here in the U.S., S&P futures are down 40 basis points. Um, the NAS, NASDAQ futures are, are harder hit with yields really backing up here. Uh, Ten-year trading near 1.75%. And this is all after Asian markets were mostly higher overnight. Hong Kong and Japan up more than 1%. European markets are mixed to higher this morning. As I said, treasuries are under pressure. Ten-year yield trading near 1.75%. Dollar is bid uh, versus both the yen and euro. Gold is up 50 basis points, okay? While WTI crude is down 90 basis points to kick us off on a Thursday morning. Uh, just a quick reminder, nothing that I always say here uh, is advice. This is for educational purposes only. Let's dive into the charts. S&P did trade at a new high yesterday. Uh, did not close there, but did trade at a new high yesterday. Same uh, IWM did not. Uh, the Dow did. The Diamonds, DIA, traded at a new high. So SPY and Diamonds traded at new highs. Qs are still working. Going to have a tough time of it today, at least based on what the early going looks like. IWM still very much the trend. So it was a dovish Fed. Basically, you know, they talked up growth. They talked up, uh, you know, inflation. They talked down unemployment. And so we're going to keep rates where they are. I think the Fed is sending the message that they are willing to let things run hot. The, their view is that any kind of inflation uh, is somewhat transitory in nature uh, and due to restarting a global economy. And now they're willing to let it run hot. Well, bond market didn't like that. Bonds selling off. Yields moving higher. Tech stocks selling off. Simple fact of the matter is the economy is getting better. You don't need to pay a premium for growth anymore. SPY support in the 370 to 380 range, then 340. This is unchanged. Q's 300 held. We're looking for new highs. We'll see. IWM 200 to 210 is the level that matters in the near term, 160, 170 below that. And SPY still has upside potential to $413. The trend remains up up until further notice. Let's hit our market in a minute and now. What are we writing about in the note today? Well, Powell's comments seen as dovish by investors. We hit on that. I mean, SPY and Diamond go to record highs on the day. Breath metrics improve on the week. We'll take a look at that chart a little bit later on in the show. It is Thursday, so we'll do breath. Dollar fades from resistance. I think this is important. I think it's important. We've talked about it. We've talked about why. Uh, but I think it's important for the riskier assets in the marketplace. So we'll take a look at that chart a little bit later on. And as I said, futures point to a lower open today. Now let's look at the major indices uh, based on power bars and how they did yesterday. The Dow up 60 basis points, 10 to three bulls to bears there. So strengthening S&P 500, um, 150 to 42 bulls to bears after tacking on 33 bips. NASDAQ 20 to 19 after 41 basis points to the upside. Small caps outperformed. Power bar ratio strengthened. Bonds down ticked. Same yields higher. And we're seeing a continuation of that here this morning. Consumer discretionary was your best group yesterday. Up 1.5%, 1.4% to be clear. 
16 to 1 bulls to bears there. According to the Chicken Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bullish. Let's look at our screen now. Final one here. It's Thursday, so it's a bearish one. And this one was a kind of a pretty uh, keep it simple screen. Um, what we refer to as classic bears, a classic bear at a high level is a stock that is bearish or very bearish uh, at Chicken Analytics uh, that is in a downtrend, it's below a falling long-term trend line uh, with bearish money flow and bearish relative strength or weak, you know, lows in persistency. Uh, I took this out to the Russell 3000 and asked for stocks with a minimum price of $10. And we were hit with 16 names uh, that passed the test. And it's kind of an interesting mix here. Pfizer, okay, Church and Dwight. Um, Clorox. So the staples have been kind of a mess of an area. So you can see that there. Verizon, maybe. Everybody got all hopped up on Verizon when Berkshire bought it, but the chicken power gauge rating doesn't like it here. So um, that's what it is. Fact set data. I mean, it's an interesting mix here. Um, stocks to avoid, stocks to potentially look for bearish ideas if you do trade that way. Stocks that if you own them, uh, maybe they make you question why do you own them? Why do you own Pfizer? Maybe go back and, and do a little more research and ask yourself, do I really still want to own this? Maybe you do. And may, maybe maybe the exercise here is this prompts you to do work and that work solidifies your view. That's great. Value add. Make it your own. But put in the work. Look for the ideas. Follow a process. Right, if we've taken nothing away from my uh, nearly three years doing this show, uh, process, doing the work, risk management. Those three are the bullet points if you had to take something away. Let's look at our sector tracker now. Moving to the last five days of the major sectors. REITs at the top of the list. Discretionary comms and tech are the top four. Industrials, healthcare materials are middle of the road. Staples, utilities, fins, and energy. So, um you know, kind of one of the things that I've been talking to our clients about is the fact that the, you know, the big rotation winners look stretched to the upside. And we're getting a little bit of a pause here now with, you know, financials and energies down over the past five days of trading. Something to keep an eye on, of course. Doesn't look like anything bad yet, but uh, definitely want to keep an eye on it. I think it's a matter of, as I've said, you know, overbought within the context of an uptrend stretched to the upside. Needs time to... Uh, to breathe, sort it out, It'll digest these moves. Both energy and financials have been monsters to the upside over the past few months. So uh, give them time to play out. Use, it as, use that as an opportunity to uh, go looking for ideas within the space such that when the setup is there, you're ready. Do the work. Have a process. Manage risk. Our industry in focus today is EMP, oil and gas exploration and production. Uh, yesterday we did services. Today, EMP. Over the past six months, and it's, again, a monster outperformer by 66%. Power bar ratio, very strong at 15 to nothing. It's currently ranked number three, uh, having moved up three slots over the past week. Uh, Bonanza Creek, BCEI, Exxon, Mobile, XOM, and Par Pacific Holdings, P-A-R-R, are very bullish, bullish, and bullish, respectively, and all three are holdings of a fund that is up and to the right is outperforming, is very bullish, is in a strong trend above a rising long-term trend line, bullish money flow. Overbought, oversold indicator is in the middle of the road, but that's okay. Uh, big picture, looking all right. It was kind of interesting. I, I thought this was interesting. Look at this, uh, sometime, look at this cup with handle here. So even if you, you had a shot at it, it was fascinating. It was working, hit this little resistance point at the interim June high. Check back, and then there, there it goes. Got a little extended, sure. Got a little extended. Now checking back a little bit, that's fine. Uh, you can probably just you can see the level, right? High, high. Call it, call it a little over seventy dollars. Uh, is kind of the level you want to see hold here if you're bullish, and if this was, you know, if there's some profit taking, you have a clear line in the sand to shoot against, in my opinion. And um, that's how I'd be looking at it. Very bullish fund outperforming the market with bullish money flow in an uptrend. If you're following a process, 
of finding the strongest stocks in the strongest areas of the market, I think the case can be made that oil and gas exploration and production is one of the stronger areas of the market. Let's look at what's trending now. Yesterday's movers and shakers, gainers and losers, Lennar. Um, you know, obviously expectations are high on the home builders. We all know the story. Um, they reported and stock was up 13%. So kudos to them for exceeding expectations. GM, nothing company specific, up 5%. Expedia traded to a 52-week high after adding 5% on the day yesterday. DR Horton, uh, housing start data out yesterday, probably goes along for the ride with Lennar also up 4.5% on the day. Uh, Dow, Dow Chem, a 52-week high. Nothing company specific to drive trading in that name. On the loser side of the board, NRG withdrew their guidance. Investors never like to hear that. Withdrawing your guidance is essentially saying, we thought we had an idea of what we were going to do this year, but now we don't. Uh, that doesn't engender a lot of confidence, and you can see down 16%. ABV, uh, FDA, and antitrust news take five and a quarter percent out of that stock. Viacom, I mentioned yesterday, you know, the, the media companies have been absolutely on fire. A little profit taking there down 4% on the day. AES, nothing company specific. Fortinet, nothing company specific to take uh, a little over 3.5% out of each of those stocks. Let's dive into the charts now. Strong breath. Rebounding with the market. That's what you like to see. Remember last week we said the uh, advanced decline line at the bottom uh, had ticked at an all-time high, and that usually preceded all-time highs for the SPY. Well, you didn't have to wait long. We got them that day and earlier this week as well. Well, let's take a look at things from a trend perspective first. The percentage of stocks in the index above their 200-day moving average is 87%. It's solidly bullish. We like anything over 60. That signals a healthy majority of stocks are in long-term uptrends. Intermediate term, same story here, 78%, pushing 79%, solidly over 60 and improving on the week. Uh, not shown here, but in my note, we talk about the percentage of stocks above their 20-day moving average. And percentage of stocks above their 20-day moving average actually ticked up from 73%, about 73% last week, to a little over 81% this week. So healthy majority across timeframes, right, from a trend perspective, it's not just long-term, right? It's, it, it's across the board strength in market breadth. We've been saying this for a while. This is unchanged. Our views are unchanged here. This, the data uh, is not changing. The, the rally's been broadening. And that's been the case for a while. There's no need to belabor that point at this point. Uh, it is, uh, it's fact at this point. So healthy, the market's healthy. Certain parts of the market though are now starting to underperform and it's a lot of the former leadership, right? And this is, I think it's part of the broadening process. You know, and for a long time, you know, tech was it, you know, and within tech software was a great place to be, right? Solid outperformance, software is eating the world. And it probably still is. Uh, but in the near term, IGV, the North American tech software ETF, is kind of at a key level here. You know, kind of nice uptrend, goes into a consolidation. We do actually can, we can arguably say we do have a series in the near term of lower lows and lower highs. Uh, we're at a support level now, 200-day moving average in play. Uh, this is the most oversold uh, we've been. This most recent pullback produced the lowest RSI reading. Uh, in the past year. And on a relative basis, it's on the verge of a breakdown. So software glitch, question mark, maybe. I think it's something you want to be paying attention to. Uh, a lot of high multiple names in the software space, which are obviously being adversely affected right now by rising rates. So yeah, I don't necessarily think that this is, um, there are probably better opportunities in other areas of the market right now. So Finally, here's the dollar and risk assets. I think it's pretty simple here. Dollar down, risk assets up. Dollar trading into resistance at the 92 level on Dixie. Uh, and that played out right as the as the queues were holding 300. So keep an eye on that relationship. That is going to wrap us up. Take, take it, shaking for a test drive. Thank you so much again. It has been my honor and my pleasure to come to you every day with my thoughts and ideas. Thank you for listening to them. Be well, be safe, stay in touch. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.